everybody and welcome back to another episode uh, of Geek with Glasses, an episode that has been a long time coming. I have had a lot going on in my life and unfortunately I have not had the opportunity to make any videos, but I definitely wanted to get a quick video out to you today, uh, the day that Apple released the first public beta of uh, OS X Yosemite's 10.10.3. They've, they've made a few changes to the operating system, and there's uh, a few little things that I've noticed, but most noticeably, and the main reason for this beta, is the first public release of the new Apple Photos app. So for those of you who do not know, Apple has canceled production on both iPhoto as well as Aperture, and essentially end of life to those applications with the intent to replace them with the Photos app. So I installed this application uh, and updated to the beta version earlier, so Night. spent about 10 or 15 minutes kind of messing around here in the photos app to kind of get an understanding of the navigation of the application so I can briefly talk to you about my first impressions of the application and show you what to expect when you get the new photos uh, application with the 10.10.3 update which Apple is basically stating it'll be out this spring. So here we are taking a look at the Photos app. Um, you can see that I'm currently looking at all photos. What I did is I actually went out and I imported a uh, my last Aperture import, which was a while ago, because as soon as Apple made the announcement that they were dropping support for Aperture, I switched to Lightroom. Um, I was hoping to hold out and uh, potentially use the new Photos app, but uh, I'll talk about why I've decided that I'm going to use Lightroom later. And, uh, you know, I really wanted to get my hands on this new Photos app, and I'm glad I made the decision to move to Lightroom. Anyways, so let's take a look. Um, you'll notice I have a couple of sets. These are uh, a few um, photo uh, albums or shoots, if you will. Uh, I did a shoot for my, my daughter when she turned nine months and, and tried to put together some pictures. So I've imported those in, and then I've got a couple of other trips. But let's take a look at some of the fundamental usability of the new Photos app. So as you can see, you know, I can take a look at all photos. Um, I can go to a Photos view, which allows me to do like the collection settings, just like you're familiar with in your iOS device so you can see you know when these photos were taken and the date ranges just like you're used to and then you can zoom in a little bit more and uh, take a look at individual photos um, all the way down to individual photo view. I can obviously uh, scale these thumbnails up and down and bring them all the way down or I can go ahead and double click on a photo that I want to take better look at and maybe do some editing on. So if I double click on a picture of my daughter here I can get a little bit different view where I can see my thumbprints uh, or my thumbnails so I can take a look at the entire photo roll and I have a couple of options around manipulating the photo and this is the part right here that has made me very, very happy that I've moved over to Lightroom and did not trust that Apple was going to give us um, anywhere past, in my opinion, general user editing capabilities. So I have an auto-enhance button here. I have a rotation capability. I have cropping functionality. I have built-in filters. Um, which it gives me five or six options, just like what we see in the iOS device. And uh, I have an op uh, option here to do some basic adjustments to the lighting, the color, and or black and white on the photo. And that's pretty much it. That's all I see right now. I can hit the add button and I can add additional um editing capability as far as you know fine tuning the photo so if I want to sharpen it or do some noise reduction or do some vignetting I can do that I can add a histogram um, thank god you can add a histogram but uh, you know I can come down and I can add these as individuals for enhancement but they're really nothing anywhere close to being on a pseudo professional level uh, you know right now as the application exists it is very much end user. I don't even think personally that the Photos app is a good replacement for iPhoto. Um, iPhoto still has much more capability than this Photos app when it comes to granular level control over using the application. I don't have a smudge tool. I don't have a dodge tool. I don't have a burn tool. I don't have any type of granular control. I have an enhance button so I can come in here and I can enhance. Uh, I can, you know, make my, my, my brush bigger or smaller. So let's say I wanted to get, you know, my daughter had a little bit of dried milk in this photo on her mouth so I can click that and, and enhance it, but I, I can't really go in and do any real photo touching, uh, with this new photos app. Um, I have option, uh, let's see, option click. What does option click give me? Uh, it really doesn't, I'm not sure what it's doing here. I don't see any modifications occurring whatsoever. Um, 
So needless to say, uh, it's a very basic app at its current iteration. Not, that's not to say that we won't see some additional functionality and some additional uh, feature sets in future releases as we get closer to the product being considered GA and in the 10.10.3 build. But uh, what we're looking at here is a very basic in my opinion, desktop version of the iOS app that we've all become very accustomed to in the last version of iOS for our iPhones and our iPads. Um, it's uh, you know it's got the ability to go out there and sync with your um, iCloud account. Unfortunately, I didn't do that with this album because what it wanted to do is it wanted to take the 29 gigs worth of photos, which these are all raw captured with my Canon camera. These are all raw photos. So the files are very large. You know, these five albums here uh, constitute 30 gigs worth of uh, photography. And when I told it that I wanted to enable the iCloud capability, it immediately wanted to sync these 29 gigs to iCloud. Well, my iCloud's not that big, so um, I can't even use it unless I start a separate album, which I can do. I can import anything from Aperture, and I can import anything from iPhoto, but one thing I want to point out is that it creates a whole new library, and if I click in here, you'll notice this was the Aperture library that I duplicated um, when I opened Photos for the first time, and it creates a duplicate library and essentially just copies it. So it doesn't give you the ability to go in and just manipulate an existing library the way iPhoto and Aperture integrate right now. Um, so essentially, if you're going to migrate your iPhoto or your Aperture libraries, you're, you're duplicating them. So uh, you're going to eat up your hard drive really, really quickly with this model. And, you know, I still have the same capability of, you know, show package contents and going in and seeing the previews and seeing the master photos, just like I could with iPhoto and Aperture. Um, but I have very little control over the files and, and doing some true editing with this app. So I'm looking to hopefully some Im see some improvements through the editing capability. You know, a picture of my son, if I drill in it, you know, I just, I don't really consider these as being anywhere near prosumer in any way, shape, or form. These are end user level touch-up capabilities. Um, and I'm hoping it gets a little bit better. Uh, I was hoping that Apple would would give us something. You know, they mentioned in their keynote originally that the the new Photos app was going to have professional level editing capability, and I'm I'm definitely not seeing that with this version. Again, this is the first iteration of the product, and you know maybe they do have some things in the works, and maybe there's a few things that I haven't uncovered yet, as I've only played with this for about 10 or 15 minutes. Um, it does have a lot of really cool features around sharing, which you would come to expect. You know, if I want to share a photo that I've taken, I very simply can right click on it and share. And I've got all of my OS 10 options for sharing. So I can, you know, post it on Aperture, uh, I'm sorry, on Facebook or Flickr or Twitter. I can airdrop it. I can IM it uh, or text message it to somebody, send it as an email. But it just really doesn't have a whole heck of a lot of options when it comes to editing, which kind of makes me sad. Um, but, uh, there you have it. I'm going to play around a little bit more. I will say one other thing that I, uh, that I noticed, I can use photos to open any other library, an aperture library or a, um, iPhoto library. If I simply quit and I hold down the alt button while opening, um, the photos app, it gives me an option of what I want to, um, what library I would like to open or creating a new library. However, once you've created that library, you cannot use iPhoto or Aperture to open the photos library. So they've done some difference. Uh, they've made some changes in the database schema and it is not backwards compatible for the older applications. So there you have it. I just wanted to do a relatively quick video and show you this new Photos app. And I'm going to play around with it a little bit more. Maybe we'll do some direct comparisons to Photos versus I, uh, iPhoto versus Aperture in future episodes. And if you would like to see those episodes, please definitely let me know in the comments below. Um, and if you have any questions about the application or any functionality that you know of that I, I, I wasn't able to see, um, in the 10 or 15 minutes that I've played with, please leave that information in the comments below. And as always, please uh, like and subscribe this video, and we will see you in the next video. Thanks again for watching, and have a great day. Bye-bye.